IPO diagrams, input process output diagrams. Input process output diagrams are used to visually display the input processes and expected outputs of a system in a tabular format. An input is data that is entered into the system either from a user or obtained from another location on the system. A process is a series of steps that will be applied to the input data in order to convert it into the desired output. And the output is the data that has been turned into information after processing, which is basically the whole purpose of a system. So below we're going to try to summarize what I've just said using the diagram. So this is what the table kind of looks like. We have a column for input, a column for processing, and a column for output. The, in the input column, it's the data that we're going to be entering into the system. And as said, it might come from a user or another location in the system. In the middle column is the processing, which is the series of steps that are going to be applied to input data, okay, in order to turn it into the desired output. And then in the final column on the right is where we're going to put the output information. So data that has been turned into information after processing, which is in line with the purpose of the system. That's what we want to see, the specific output of information, which obviously we hope is going to be of benefit to the user using the system. So building upon this, IPO diagrams also help us understand the relationship between these three elements. Okay, the diagram shows the path of which data is entered into the system in the form of input and then how it's going to be processed by the system in the process column and then what is actually transformed into in order to make it the desired information which is the output of the system so we're seeing a bit of a relationship in the flow of the diagram so it's kind of giving us a bit of an algorithmic mindset in that we can kind of see it coming together okay in planning the relationship between our input processes and outputs now it's not always the case, but sometimes it's a benefit writing the output first, because usually we want to know what information are we going for? What do we want as our end product okay, of our system or program? And so we might write the this desired output first, and then from there, what inputs do we need to get to that desired output? And then what processes will transform that input into the desired output. So it's kind of a, a, obviously a process, but we might want to start with the end result first and then work our way backwards, okay, in order to figure out what inputs we need to get to our outputs and then what processes need to be applied to those inputs to make them our outputs there. But that, that's just one way of going about it there. So essentially in the input column, what data needs to be entered for processing, okay, so we're linking our inputs to processing, in the processing column, what operations need to be applied to the data that was obviously entered in the input column in order to turn it into our expected output. And then finally, in our third column of output, what is the expected result we want to see after processing? So that is how they all kind of interlink together there. So what we'll do now is we'll look at a quick example for a basic calculator. So the program is going to be developed to allow a user to enter two different numbers. The software is going to either add, subtract, multiply, or divide these numbers at the user's discretion, displaying the result. So let's use this IPO diagram we have here in order to do so. And I'm going to do this as I kind of tried to illustrate in the previous slide. And I'm going to say first and start off with my output. And what I want is my output is essentially the result of the calculation okay so that's what needs to take place there what I've got to do next is I'm going to say well what am I going to be inputting to the system in order to do the processing so firstly I need number one because the user is going to enter in two different numbers so I could put in their first number which the system then needs to save as a variable okay and I'm going to call that variable number one I'm also then going to put in number two and same thing we need to save that as a variable and I'm going to call that variable number two from here then, as said, at the discretion of the user, we're going to actually say whether we want to add, subtract, multiply or divide. And my program might have that as a case selection, okay, which allows for the user, based on their input, it will do one of those four operations. Okay, and I'll need to set that up within my program. From there then, once that's been selected, the calculation needs to take place between number and num number one and number two, based on what was selected by the user. And then it needs to display that calculation result, which is a process in itself, which will end with that final output of the result of the calculation. So I hope that gave you an understanding of how we can work backwards there. Okay, starting with the output, what inputs do I need to get that output? And then starting to think what processes will help me turn that input into my output. Okay, so basically, I hope this video has given you an understanding of IPO diagrams and how 
they give us an understanding of what needs to go into our system in the form of inputs, what processes will take place on the actual input, and essentially how they'll turn it into the desired output we want from our system to help satisfy user needs.